So you're thinking Zerg vs Protoss is scary, right? Well, honestly, if you have a solid build order and you follow the scouting tips that I already made a video about, you should probably be easily getting to Master League, right? So lately I've been going over Zerg scouting versus Protoss and how you should figure out what you should be going for and all that kind of jazz, but honestly, if you don't really have a solid build order, you should really, really not be doing it, because it doesn't really have any use. If you don't really follow a build order, it's super, super hard to actually push your advantage. Now, as far as Zerg vs Protoss goes, there's not really that many changes in the early part of the game, honestly. Most Zerg players seem to agree that super passive play and getting as many drones as you possibly can is the best way to go. Pretty much everyone is opening up with three hatch, and the only assumption that we are going to make today is that your opponent is going for a quick expansion himself as well. So that's either a Nexus first, or a Forge fast expand, or something similar along those lines, and you're going to assume your opponent is going for something greedy himself, and we are gonna play pretty much even greedier. So in this video, I'm gonna go over a super standard three hatch rebuild order for Zerg vs Protoss, and in the next video, in the later videos, we're gonna go over possible transition in the middle part of the game. So this build order should keep you safe versus pretty much anything, considering your scouting, what we discussed in the previous video, and obviously, if you're managing to execute this, you will go into the middle part of the game with an advantage. So let's get started. Okay, so here we go. This is actually a game that I just hosted up. It has absolutely no opponent, so we can practice it pretty much to the fullest. And I'm gonna open up super, super standard. Now keep in mind, our goal is going to get as many drones as we possibly can while playing super safe and without pretty much dying. So I've actually made a video before that goes on Zerg vs Proto Scouting, so I'm just going to execute it, not going to go super in-depth at all in this game. Um, however, keep in mind that you always want to be scouting at the exact same time. So there's a whole lot of things that you would normally do at the same time. So we're going to open up with a 9 Overlord. And I'm actually going to send that one straight to a location where I can later fly it into the base whenever I feel necessary. Now I'm going to imagine my opponent is opening up with something like a Forge Fast Expand or a Nexus First or something like that. Basically just making drones and I know there's a little bit of controversy going on uh, between going Hatch First and Pool First but honestly the difference between a hatch first and a pool first is very, very minor and pretty much all the Korean programmers that are not playing like very high level tournaments are going for a pool first and even in tournaments they go for pool first. So I would highly recommend you open up with a pool yourself as well. So here we go, I'm going to throw down my 14 spawning pool and just going straight back to making more drones. At 15 supply, I want to be getting my hatchery up, so I'm going to send out a drone relatively early, just to make sure that I do so. Also going to set up my camera hold keys, because I really like working with those. So I can easily switch between all my bases. And I'm going to just, you know, have this drone be morphed into a hatchery as soon as I can. So, so far it's been a 9 overlord, 14 spawning pool, 15 hatchery. Next up, I'm going to stop droning for a little while, and I'm actually going to get an overlord again. This little pause in droning actually allows my queen to come out a little bit earlier, which is quite nice because obviously it's going to give you more larva with the queen inject. I'm also going to start one set of zerglings that I'm going to use to chase away the probe that would usually be poking around my main base, and also to make sure that I can safely take my natural, or my third base rather. Now keep in mind, my overlord here is scouting, okay there's a nexus up, don't really need to worry about anything, so I will be able to safely take my third base myself. Once my Zerkling spawn, I'm gonna send a drone right after it, so this makes sure that I will be able to throw up my hatchery at the third base very, very quickly. Also gonna start queuing up my second queen because, you know, I wanna start that ASAP. Gonna inject with my first queen and walk it to the natural. At this point, my drone is about to arrive at the third base, so I'm going to morph that into a hatchery as soon as I can. This is the point where I also start going back to droning. Now keep in mind, I have 16 drones in my main base, so I'm going to start droning up my third, or my natural instead, because I don't need any more drones in my natural. At this point, I'm just choking, or poking around with my zerglings, making sure that everything is safe, and I'm also going to start another overlord at 24 or 23 ish supply, just making sure that all my queen injects. Gonna wait for my next queen to spawn as well. Just inject, 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 and make only drones. Considering I know there's a nexus up, there's pretty much no aggression that my opponent can really do until like a bunch later into the game, so I am free to drone up completely. 31, I'm gonna get another overlord. 
And you guessed it right, I'm gonna go back to droning again. Now once this next inject pops, I'm actually going to start another queen in my natural and lay a creep tumor down with my first queen and walk that one to the third. That way I will actually have creep connecting my bases in time and I will actually safely be able to spend all my larva once again. Into drones. Now keep in mind I'm using my zerglings at the front to poke for any kind of probes that try to move out and whatnot while just making drones. Just making more and more. Keep my crease spread going, and at six minutes, I'm gonna take double gas. Keeping all my queen injects up. And I can start moving everything to the third base now. Considering I have plenty of drones in my main, or in my natural. Gonna start saturating those gases. Gonna start a roach warren as well, once the gases are finished. And this is six minutes and 30 seconds where I start flying in the overlords into my opponent's main bases. So here we go, going to be poking in to both bases, still while droning up, keeping all my queen and jacks up, and playing super safe. So what I'm looking for right now is mostly the gases at the natural. If I do see the gases at the natural, great, I know that I will pretty much be always safe uh, to make more drones. If I do not see the gas, I will be a little bit more hesitant. Gonna start my lair, as well as an evolution chamber. At this point, I'll also start more gases at my third base, since I'm max saturation. And you guessed it right, gonna start making more drones. My next 100 gas is gonna go to Zerking Speed, because I'm also wanting to have that. Now, ideally, you would obviously be crease sprouting a little bit more efficiently than I'm doing in this game, but you get the idea of it. As you can see, I am now max saturation on three bases with four gas geysers going, and this is pretty much where you can start transitioning into the middle part of the game. I will be getting the missile attack upgrade number one, but obviously if you're gonna go for something else, that might not be what you want to go for. Now usually whenever you hit max saturation on the bases that you're wanting to saturate, you want to start producing units. So this is also exactly the point where I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start roach speed in this case, and I'm going to start making a lot of roaches and a lot of zerglings. Now, considering my opponent is on two bases, and we have scouted that he's still not actually having a third base up, so let's say we are scouting around and checking, okay, nine minutes, no third base whatsoever, we are pretty much safe, or we can actually be pretty safe and certain that we have 50% more income than our opponent. Let's say our opponent is on two bases himself, that instantly means that he will not be able to just make nearly enough stuff to keep up with our production, because we just have a total base more income than our opponent. So this is where stuff gets obviously a little bit more complicated. Now that wasn't super hard, right? Keep in mind that what you can always do is simply open up a custom game like I did and practice this about a billion times. Okay, maybe not a billion, maybe like 10, 15, 20 times. It will maybe take you a few hours and it's maybe not gonna be the most fun you ever had in StarCraft 2. But if you manage to execute this like I just showed you in a ladder game, I can't really think that you will ever stay below Masters for longer than like a few months. Obviously, you're gonna have to play a few, you know, a few adjustments if you're knowing what to do, but, but you know, if you execute it like this it should be a relatively easy matchup especially if you're like below diamond because you should be simply crushing your opponents now there are a lot of mistakes that you can make so it is crucial that you open up a custom game and practice this now the last thing that you really want to have happening is that you sort of go into a game and you don't really know what to do you sort of need to look like at your second monitor and you're like okay I, I need to think what what do I get next when oh shit the roach war oh fuck I forgot the roach war that is the last thing you want to have happening, okay? If you practice the build like 10, 15, 20, 30 freaking times in a custom game, you will be able to simply nearly dream it and you will be able to execute the build without any problems whatsoever. So I would recommend open up a custom game, practice it a bunch of times until you feel comfortable, then go on the ladder and then grind those ladder points. I want to thank you guys all for watching, have an amazing day. Do not forget to lift the like button as well as the favorite button, as well as to subscribe if you want to see more. Don't forget to smile, and hopefully, I'll see you again. What? A Zerg versus Zerg. So what should we be going for? I think, um, lately I've been going for a lot of different kind of ten pools in DVZ, especially because pretty much all the top-level Koreans are doing the same sort of stuff, and, you know, I always wanted to...